Voyager 1 is sending back nonsensical ones and zeros back to Earth. Alien invasion or technical glitch? Let's talk about it. Congratulations! You're watching ESN, your choice for everything. News, views, and reviews that you can use. Let's jump right into it. Rapid fire this edition. Here we go. Popular mechanics. This is interesting. Now, this was sent out 46 years ago. The Voyager 1 is at the edge of the solar system. We're in interstellar space. Sent the year of the snake in Chinese astrology. Let's see what popular mechanics has to say. The end may finally be near. For the spacecraft, at least. Well, guess what? I think it's going to come back roaring better than ever. I think that it's actually being tweaked right now by extraterrestrials. Okay, I'm joking, maybe, but let's look into it. The first spacecraft to ever leave the heliosphere, Voyager 1 is now a legendary spacecraft. After 46 years, it's starting to show its age. I resent that. According to NASA, a glitch in the spacecraft's flight data system is causing Voyager 1 to send back a repeated series of ones and zeros rather than science and engineering data. The Voyager team is currently working on a fix for the issue. However, the 15 billion mile distance and outdated technology does create an opportunity, making it possible that this could take weeks to fix if it happens at all. So if you look at Voyager 1, launched September 1977, an 1800 pound space probe carrying one of the famous golden records containing sounds of planet Earth, which was carried towards the edge of our solar system. Now, it did surpass Voyager 2, which was launched before Voyager 1 in December of the same year. Voyager 1 was the first spacecraft to actually leave the heliosphere, becoming humanity's first emissary among the stars. That's pretty cool. So let's take a look at Voyager 1 right now. This is JPL, NASA, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Voyager 1 is the furthest human-made object from Earth and the first spacecraft to reach interstellar space. Scientists think it will reach in the inner edge of the Oort cloud in 300 years. Something to look forward to. I'm envisioning technologies that scientists create in the very near future that will be so fast they'll surpass Voyager 1 and 2 within a matter of days or weeks. But it's still way out there. And I'm actually kind of impressed with this old school computer system hooked up to an 1800 pound satellite launched into space almost 50 years ago. The fact that it's still sending back data is pretty cool. And these zeros and ones, now this is what I'm wondering, what would cause that type of glitch? Would it be the distance, the age, the actual energy fields that, it, that are surrounding the probe right now? Because that's what I'm thinking. There's something going on with being so far out in space, the energy out there, the radiation, the elements, most likely it's a glitch. However, we need to keep our minds and eyes open to the possibility that this data that's being sent back could be some type of code. Like what if this is code for communication from another species? What if this code is information being sent back from our future generation, some type of time travel technology. It's very interesting. I would like to see this code. I would like to see these repeated numbers that are being sent back and see if we could find a code breaker or a decipher to find out if there is an underlying set of information sets, because I wouldn't be surprised. Now, if I'm gonna look at the possibilities and put a, a percentage on it in my mind, there's probably a 1% to 10% chance, 1% to 10%, I'll give it 10% that it's sending back some kind of information that can be evaluated and decoded and actually offer insight into something besides just continuation of these numbers, these zeros and ones. This is really cool. It makes me think of a mua mua a little bit. I wonder if a mua mua 
was really just an asteroid, an interstellar asteroid or comet or space debris, or if it was some type of space probe. Now, Amuamua itself, the mythology behind Amuamua is pretty remarkable. Let's go to the next article. This is interesting. Ancient Mars wasn't simply just wet. It experienced momentous floods and clear evidence of this water-filled past. NASA recently released an image snapped by its Perseverance rover showing large, heavy boulders that are absolutely blanketing part of the Jezero crater, which is a dried-up river data delta. Let's take a look at this. Mashable.com. This is really cool. Ancient Mars wasn't simply just wet. It experienced momentous gushing. As clear evidence of this water-filled past, NASA recently released an image snapped by its Perseverance rover showing large, heavy boulders absolutely blanketed part of the Jezero crater, which you can see right here. Wow. So cool. So let's put this into perspective. This is an artist rendition of what Mars might have looked like before whatever happened basically took it back to this. And I think that the Valley Marineris, whatever created that, caused it to lose its atmosphere and its lush greenness and its oceans underneath the crust, underneath the dirt. Like this is Valley Marineris right here. Look at that. Doesn't it look like giant electrical scarring to you? Do you know that that thing is about as long as America, the length of it? Look at that. To put into perspective, it's actually longer than the lower 48. It extends it ex several thousand miles. This is electrical scarring from what's called the Lichtenberg effect or Lichtenberg figures. It's basically capturing lightning. And if you look at these figures, you can see... It looks almost identical to the Valley Marineris on Mars. So when you read about the Thunderbolt of the Gods and you find the Thunderbolt of the Gods in ancient mythology, the after effects could be Mars. So thank you so much for watching. Check back daily. We upload new content every single day. Your source for news, views, and reviews that you can use. Be the change the world needs to see. And subscribe to ESN IC News.